Hey guys, Sherry G, welcome to the channel. So look, there are a lot of people that are feeling some type of way about all of the recent information that's been put out regarding Melody Cherie and Martel Holt's court custody case or child custody case, I'm sorry. Um, people were like feeling some type of way about some of the questions that the court asked, blase, blase, etc., etc. Now, I want to give some commentary about it. Um, I actually did listen to uh, Mims, and um, I listened to when he first put this information out, and then I listened to the panel on last night. But there were so many questions that were not answered and so many dots that just were not connected. So I want to go ahead and try to smooth the waters a little bit, if you will, in this video. But before I do, keep in mind that the views expressed here are alleged. It's all of opinion and it's for entertainment purposes. So yes, um, Mims is short for Make It Make Sense, is a YouTuber and I'm actually subscribed to his channel. I enjoy watching, I'm um, listening and watching his commentary every now and then. But this most recent one he did um, because he was given some information as it pertains to Melody and Martel's child court custody case. And he was presenting that information to his subscribers and to the people in the bushes. But anyway, he was taken back by some of the questions that Melody allegedly had to answer according to these court documents. So I listened to it and I have to say the questions were like, ugh, like they wrecked my nerves too. But then following, he did um, a panel. And so he did a live and he had a panel and he actually had an investigator and supposedly, allegedly, she's the one who furnished him with these documents. And so he had her on there to help answer questions and to kind of like smooth the waters because a lot of the millimeters were really, really upset. And I get it. It's a sensitive case. We want the best for the children and we want the best for Melody. And it just kind of seems like it wasn't going that way according to the documents they were reading. And, um, but we have to keep in mind those documents are old. I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. That is not what has happened most recently in the court. Okay. So Mims never produced the receipts. He never showed it to us. He said he didn't want to. And I forgot the reason he gave, but I respect that. The investigator who came on, she didn't re re um, produce the receipts either for whatever reason. Okay. I respect that. But I don't recall them ever saying what time frame this actually happened, what the, the date, the dates were of this particular proceeding, right? But I did remember that that, that the most recent judge is a female. And that, that according to those documents, that was a, a male. So that further proved to me that this was old news and I just hate that it's out there because it caused all of this confusion and it just caused, I mean, people just so really passionate about where they stand and even people who tend to be more unbiased <laughs> were becoming unglued because of, you know, the things that were being asked in that particular um, situation. But anyway, I don't know, guys. Let's just remember, those of us who follow Black Titanic, that she actually did go down to the court um, on this most on Melody and Martel's most recent uh, court hearing. And so here's what we know. We know that out of the mouth of Martel, he actually walked out of a court situation. Him and his lawyer were sitting and talking, and he was trying to move it from a hearing to mediation. So they wrote up whatever they needed to write up, presented it to Mel and her lawyer. Martel said out of his own mouth, they sat with that information for like 30 to 45 minutes and they came back with a no, we want to go ahead and go to court. And so according to Martel, his lawyer then told him it would be like 
$10,000 for 20 days, and then it would actually end up being more, of course, if the days were longer. And Martel stated that he walked out because he didn't want to go back and forth, right? So let's remember that. So this was more recent than this situation that was being discussed on Mims' channel yesterday. And then Black Titanic actually went down to the court on the most recent court date, which was about seven days ago. And allegedly, Martel never showed up. And we do know, and you can go back to Black Titanic's channel and you can check it out. She did a live from the Madison County Courthouse. And what we know from that situation is that there is has been a change in who is presiding over the case. The judge presiding over the case right now is Judge Allison Austin. So, yes. Um, and when she was doing her live, someone directed her to, like, where that courtroom was. Now, keep in mind, because of the sensitivity and the nature of this particular case, Black Titanic wasn't able to sit on the case. She asked if she could, but they told her that she couldn't. Um, it's not open to the public. Again, I don't know how these documents got out. Even though they're old, it's still like a question, like how did they even get out? And because allegedly, from what we know, that when there is a case like this and there are minor children involved, these documents are not open to the public. They're sealed. So I don't know how they got out. But allegedly, according to this investigator that Mims had on his, his panel, she stated that she pulled it from... Melody's lawyer's um, page or from his, his uh, I guess from his internet, his, his website. So anyway, um, but she never mentioned his name. Now she did say that she called the lawyer and asked him if he would come on panel to ask, to answer some questions. But is he going to do that when the case is still ongoing? Make it make sense, okay? <laughs> That just didn't make sense to me. I'm like, okay, all right. Um, anyway, and I remember this um, investigator because if you guys recall the alleged DV situation between Arion and Martel, she was on panel with Mims debunking it being DV and stating that it was actually a noise disturbance. And she mentioned that we wouldn't have access to the records until that very next day, which would have been Friday and no later than that Monday. And of course, here we are today and we still have nothing. So anyway, yeah, I did. I remembered her. But anyway, people were kind of upset with her last night because <laughs> they were saying she wasn't really answering any of the questions that they had and that she seemed strongly biased, like leaning towards Martel's situation more than Melody's situation. You know, that's what the people were saying because I was reading some of the comments and I'm like, oh, my God, it was a good panel. Shout out to all of the YouTube people that I know, all of the ladies that I know. Um, who was it? Here for the hot tea. Tay Talks, I think, dropped the mic. I think even Pretty Brown Eyes was on panel. But shout out to all of you who went on panel. You guys did an excellent job. You know, I just want to kind of connect the dots because I know some people left like going, oh, my God, what is really going on? But just keep in mind that that situation is old. Um, right now, we know that they still have things intact as far as what their visitation was set up between them before. So it's 50 50, seven days on, seven days off. Her cousin alluded to that. Um, she also said that there will be no child support uh, um, awarded to Martel, and allegedly he will not be receiving any of the profits from Sugar Mama's um, products. We know that, and I believe that because I don't think Mel Melody would just allow her cousin to put that out there. And secondly, we know that her manager would be putting her heels on some necks if that information wasn't true. So I'm just going to rest in that. Again, I just want you guys to keep in mind that that information was old. As disturbing as it was, the questions that were asked, it was old. You know, people were upset because it just seemed like this judge was really not on Mel's or, or considering Mel's 
vantage point at all. Of course, they have to do what's in the best interest of the children. But this judge was stating that Melody wasn't being cooperative and that Martel was really trying to be more cooperative than her. Anyway, this was based on the fact that Melody kept changing her phone number. And we know why she was doing that, right? We know why Mel changed her phone number because it even came out on the reunion stage that her phone was tapped into and she did something to take care of that. So I'm sure that um, she filed a report and that was served or shown to the courts later. Of course, that wasn't mentioned in those documents. So like I said, there's a lot of things that were missed, a lot of things that were not stated that made me kind of look at the whole situation and go, why are we talking about this? Because this is old and they have moved forward since then. So this is just dragging us back. And for some of the people who feel so passionate about everything that was going on, it's just kind of putting like a bad taste in everybody's mouth. So I just wanted to come on and kind of just remind everybody that, look, this is what's happened. All of that was old. Let's just move forward. Um, and pray that everything keeps going in a, in the best way for the children, right? Because they do need to have exposure and spend time with both of their parents. So let's just pray that Martel does what he needs to do to co-parent with Melody, to be the best that he can be for his children. And let's pray that Melody continues to stay in a good headspace and keep her heart and mind clear so that she can continue to move forward and do the best that she can and be the best that she can for her children in this situation. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. I just kind of wanted to clear the waters a little bit. If you haven't done so, please hit that like button on your way out. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell because I will be back. Until then, ciao.